Welcome in. Happy Wednesday. This is your live chat for the Arnold Palmer Invitational, the Puerto Rico Open, Live Golf Hong Kong, the Colo Guard Classic, the Astara Chili Classic, and I'm missing one, the Johnson Workwear Open. Yeah, there's like six different events across five tours this week. Signature event on the PGA Tour. There is a ton of stuff happening. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm, I'm back in the I'm back in the captain's chair. I've got all my stuff in front of me. I'm ready to spend as much time as necessary to go through all of this. We will do that via questions, concerns, and comments that you will put in the chat right now and throughout the next hour or so. We'll deep dive players. We'll use data. We will have a lot of fun, eh, questionable, along the way. Before we kick this off, uh, here is what we are going to do. And I'm, I remember this week, boom, the weather, right? Let's just knock out weather questions right now. This is the 10 day for a, a weather station that is at Bay Hill. Beautiful. 83 and sunny, 82 and sunny, 83, 88, little chance of precipitation until Sunday morning. Don't worry about that. Um, the wind, which you see right here, I'll zoom out a little bit. Uh, at least on Thursday and Friday, seems to be fairly steady and minimal. There may might be a little afternoon pickup, just a couple miles an hour, on Friday afternoon. I'm not sure it's super actionable, especially having to, to figure that out now for Friday. But hey, that's your call. This is the forecast. I'm just showing it to you. As what happened last week, and I guess this happens every week, and maybe I just don't ever always realize it. If you put your question in on YouTube too early, it gets chopped off at some point. Like it updates and then the old stuff gets cleared out. Kanice, who is phenomenal, has sent me uh, the missing questions that are out there right now. So I'm going to roll through these. Marty B says, will you be doing another March Madness pick special? I see that 538 is no longer available for an input. What are the other options? So yes, I will do it. Uh, I do it every year, basically. So selection Sunday is what two weeks from now, a week from now. I'll do it the Monday or Tuesday after that, right? The bracket has to be done. I have to have all that information. There are other ways outside of 538 because people tell me about them every single year. Hey, use Ken Palm, you idiot. 538 stinks. Use this, use that. So yes, there are plenty of other options. Uh, Coleman says, Hey Rick, Minwoo Lee seems like a discount. What are, what were his strokes gained approach for the cognizant? His iron seems super dialed. I don't know if the stats are going to bear that out. We'll find out. Do you think this warrants a green light to play him? All right, here we go. We're getting to the data for the first time. This is my website, rickrungood.com. Basically everything you see from here on out is going to be from my website, or I'll let you know when it's not. We're going to pull up Minwoo's stat profile. I don't think he gains. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I think I was thinking of his uh, starts prior to this, where he was bad on approach at Phoenix, bad at Farmers, bad at the American Express, et cetera, et cetera. He did gain six strokes on approach at the Cognizant, basically a stroke per round, two strokes on uh, Sunday. You are absolutely right, Coleman. It was a spectacular performance. The The thing with a, you know, kind of an auto play of Minwoo Lee is that everybody else feels the same way. And this isn't a horrible thing. It opens up some some vi some uh, flexibility for you in terms of salary cap. But we've got Min Wu Lee at 6,600, trending towards a 17% ownership. We have Eric Van Royen at 6,600, uh, trending towards a 13% ownership. Those two are sucking up the vast majority of the ownership in the sub 7K range. So if you're willing to eat that chalk there and you want to get a little bit different in other places, that's fine. I think Min Wu is uh, not only a great play, but he has uh, in he has usually played well at bigger events. His major championship record keeps getting better, uh, difficult courses, tough fields, stuff like that. Minwoo tends to shine a little bit. Mitchell says, hey, Rick, where is the love for Kurt Kitayama? Approach play dominant, great start to 2024 and defending champion. All right, well, let's do the Kurt Kitayama deep dive. Now, I've been waiting for Kitayama to kind of click because I've been seeing it too. I've been seeing the fact that he's gained on approach basically every event for the last six. The putter has not been cooperating, um, which is a hair concerning. Maybe he gets off of Poana, gets on Bermuda, and, and everything comes comes back to him a little bit. Um, 
this is a, I, I think this is a good, not great profile, to be honest with you. I think it's, I think it's fine. Uh, he's cheap enough to warrant a little bit of exposure, but I'm, I'm not sprinting to the window to get access to a lot of Kurt Kitayama. I, I think it's good. I see, I see where he could pop off and snap at this thing. You're going to get a little bit of, um, increased ownership more than it should even just a hair because he is the defending champion we are projecting him right now at where'd you go kurt ten and a half percent which is about twice that of nikolai hoygaard it's a little bit more than steven yeager a lot more than ricky fowler etc etc here we go deep dive on jason day sure let's go uh jason day this is courtesy of mark is putting together a profile uh in which he's gained strokes on approaching two straight uh, excuse me, two or more in two straight. So that's uh, a T6 in Phoenix, a ninth at Riviera. These are all great signs. I want to pull up his Bay Hill stuff. Uh, Jason Day is breaking out of that little post-win slump, in my opinion. T10 here last year, T31 in 2021. He didn't play in 2022. Then he had those, you know, a couple of down years, right? A couple of WDs, won this in 2016. Remember when he withdrew and then was at Disney World? What year was that? Was that, it had to be 19, right? Um, yeah, I think that was that. That was that year. That was that was not fun. But yeah, I I think I think Jason Day is a fine little play, and there's a lot of reason to think that. Two safest. Oh, um, who would you leave out in a lineup between Hadwin Davis? That's Cam Davis and uh, Austin Eckert. Uh, probably Cam Davis. I'm not super thrilled about that. I could I could leave out Adam Hadwin either. I think Eckert's the only one that you kind of really need to have in there. Two safest guys in the six K range. Um. Probably already talked about them. EVR and Minwoo Lee, there's a reason that their popularity is, is what it is. I think that you could also, you know, we are seeing, this is kind of a weird thing that's happening in golf right now. We are seeing these, especially here in 2024, these guys that pop off and have a great week continue to play well. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the field con uh, compositions. Maybe it is these guys are better than they used to be. I don't know. But I'm thinking of Matthew Pavone. I'm thinking of... Um, the guy who's got three straight top tens who didn't get into this field, not I, not Matt, Matthew Neesmith, Andrew Novak. Um, he continues to play well. EVR continues to play well. There used to be a time where these guys would just pop up and disappear and you'd never hear from them again. There's This is also another very good spot for Austin Eckler, right? I mean, this is going to ask for T to green plays, going to ask for ball striking. He was great last week. I, I don't know if I would call him safe, but I think he's definitely... He's definitely in my top three of sub 7K guys, and he's going to be a third of the ownership of Min Woo Lee. Hey, Rick, would you mind real quick running through a couple of guys who have high strokes, gain ceilings, and are decent fits for first round leader sweats? Yeah. So go to the power rankings, go to strokes, gain distribution. Look at this. I had to, I had to make the field filters buttons this week because the list was too long. That's how many, that's how many events we have going on here. Um, I like to open this up pretty wide just because you know, you only have so many first rounds, but, um, I, I want to see guys that gain fire more strokes to the field. Um, can't lay Rory Jake Knapp would be pretty interesting as a first round leader, Jason day, um, Ludwig. I mean, Keegan Bradley is always on this list. I think Keegan Bradley is kind of interesting. He's got an 8.67, uh, strokes gained, uh, five or more rate, which is one of the higher rates always plays well in round one. This is a course that should reward kind of that total driving, which is what Keegan does. Well, what has he done? Well, I won't die. I won't deep dive into Keegan. That's a different question for a different, for a different, uh, time, but that's probably where I'd go. Hey, Rick, your content is amazing. Thank you. And the work you put in is immense. Um, <laughs> so I mean no disrespect, but when guys like Pavone, Knapp, Ekro, and Kirk are winning, do you ask why you do all this work? Yeah, of course. Sure. Yeah, I I mean, it was a lot easier when uh, John Rom, Scotty Scheffler, Rory McIlroy, uh, and Victor Hovland were winning everything, wasn't it? That was a lot. That was a lot easier. Um, no, in, in reality, I've had some, I have not won an outright, uh, have I won one this year? I'm trying to think I, I hit Neiman last week, 16 to one, but I'm, I'm trying to think if I, I'm just racking my brain here. Um, but I've had some really good DFS weeks to be honest with you, because I've the, 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 the getting on Matthew Pavone, the being early on Will Zalatoris, the, uh, you know, the, the stuff, the stuff like that. Um, being in on Jake Knapp early has been very profitable in other ways. I'm getting crushed in one and done. 
I'm not hitting any outright tickets, but there has been a lot of, um, you know, like top 30, top 40 stuff and, and DFS lineups that have, that have gone pretty well. So it's still, still very valuable to be able to, to assess a field. Rank these four in terms of finishing position this week, Burns, Spieth, Fitz, and Zalatoris. Uh, I mean, I, this might be crazy, but I'm, I'm going Zalatoris. Uh, Spieth, Burns, Fitz would be for me. Josh, Josh says, you helped me settle on Lowry last week. That's another one. I'm three of uh, 41 and one and done. Let's keep the magic going. I present to you course history, Rory, course fit, Cam Young, or steady old molasses robot can't lay. Okay, probably a good time to have this part of the one and done conversation. Um, because this, this, the answer to this question requires a lot of variables. Here is the projected one and done ownership. Uh, it's not even projected. It is actual ownership right now through how many people have put in line, put in their selections on officefootballpool.com. Rory McElroy, no surprise, is the most popular at 15.5%. Scotty Scheffler at 10.5 and Cantlay at 10.4. Then you get Hovland and Cam Young in the nines, Spieth at seven, Fitzpatrick at six, Ludwig at six, et cetera, et cetera. The way that I read this board is as follows there are a lot of high end winning upside golfers at very low ownerships. Xander Shoffley, 3.9%. Will Zalatoris, 3.7%. I mean, Colin Morikawa, 1.4. Justin Thomas, 1%. Um, these are guys that are very capable of winning this golf tournament at, at low ownerships. So a lot of this depends on what your position is. A lot of it depends on who you have already selected, what tournaments you have to play. I have opted for Cantlay in, in a lot of spots. There's a couple that I've rolled out Rory. There's a couple that I've rolled out Scotty. I think that I will um, definitely end up playing Scotty at a sig or if I have, I saw I've, a lot of them I've already played Scotty, right? I played him at Riviera. So I think playing Scotty at a signature event is smart because you're going to get essentially a no cut. There is a cut this week, but essentially a no cut. You are going to get, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a massive purse. It's going to be better than him trying to beat everybody, 150 guys at the PGA Championship or something like that. I'm not ready to use Rory yet. There's a lot of good Rory spots where he's not going to be nearly as, as highly owned. He's not playing his best golf right now, all that stuff. So I, I've settled on Patrick Cantlay. Um, the other thing is, Armin is asking me to turn down my gain a little bit here. Is that better? Hopefully that works. So um, the other thing to consider here, and I've, I've showed this tool a lot. This is a this is a tool that I believe in because it's a tool that I consulted on. I helped build this. So this is on Pool Genius. This is, there's a link in the description. They do a free trial when you sign up. Um, but it allows you to, to look at all those factors, to put your picks in, and to get a short list of golfers that are graded based on their odds, based on a lot of factors. And it tells you kind of who the best place for you are. So you, know, you look at this and you see somebody like uh, Tommy Fleetwood has a 3% chance of winning this golf tournament. Those are like his implied odds, right? Uh, you've got Max Homa at 2.5%, Justin Thomas at 27 Is that significantly worse than Patrick Cantlay's 4.1? Probably not. I mean, it's 1%, right? I understand I would take that, but it's it's 1%, and those guys are somewhere between 1% and 3% projected ownership. So... Uh, really good tool to have. Uh, obviously, I believe in it because I've, I'm, I'm part of it. So there's a link in the description if you if you want to try it out. With Raw Manhattan gone now, don't you feel like everybody in one and done will use live golfers and majors? Does that change your strategy? Yes. So I think that it is. Uh, I think the only two that I'll end up using in one and dones at majors are I'll probably end up using Raman. I'll probably end up using Brooks. Uh, because I don't think I can go all year without using them. Those are going to be my only two opportunities, but I'm, I'm unlikely to use live guys in all four because I think everybody's going to try to do that. Um, so I'll be a little bit different. I'll probably use uh, Scotty in one. I might use Rory in one. I might use Brooks and I might use John Rahm if I have those guys available. Like I said, there are some one and dones in which I have already used Scotty Scheffler. So, uh, but yes, I think it's a very good, astute observation. Okay. Um, all right. I think we're back to the 
regular comments here so we can do this samuel says willie z is third on 93rd on the pga touring club at speed this season at 115 miles an hour can you look at riff for his speed there uh yes but it, i'll have to go pull it and i'm not gonna uh waste everybody's time on that we did the deep dive on Kitayama, which is nice. Gabe says, Rick, with the wind, with the with the wind forecast on Saturday and Sunday, is there a tool we can utilize on the site to evaluate which players perform best in windy conditions? Gabe is gonna he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. He's gonna set me off. The uh, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. The wind wind stats in their current form are bad they do not account for gusts they do not account for direction they do not account for shot shape they do not account for any other factor in which a golfer might have played good or bad as far as i'm aware the win stats that currently exist and get floated around on twitter or whatever are basically looking at past historical uh wind averages and saying did patrick can't like play well on a day that had 15 mile an hour wins yes or no that tells us nothing. It really doesn't. Was it, what if there were zero mile an hour wins? Would he have played even better? Would he have played worse? Who who knows? How would we ever quantify that? Um, until wind stats get better, I think they're. I don't think you should be considering them. And I think that it's wrong to be. All right. Sorry. When building a model, how do you pick between using proximity and green regulation from yardage buckets, grape or strawberry jelly? I'm not a big jelly fan. So I wouldn't use, um, I don't know if I'd use either of those. I would just use strokes gained metrics. I think that proximity is a little bit more interesting because proximity is closer to strokes gained than green regulation percentages. Uh, the exception to that role might be on very small greens where maybe green and regulation percentages are lower in general. So just hitting a green is, is more valuable. Thanks for all you do says Matt, uh, which winner this season lines up better with the stats here, Knapp or Kirk. Okay. So we're learning a lot about Jake Knapp. Uh, we were very early on Knapp at, uh, farmers or post farmers. We were very early on him for his win. And then I looked at him at cognizant and said, no chance he plays well at PGA National. Guess what? His stat profile from Honda God, was almost the same as his stat profile from Mexico. Really, it's truly impressive stuff, which was very, very similar to his stat profile at the Farmers. From what I know, and from the very limited stats that we have, in you know, six measured starts for Jake Knapp, this should be one of the better spots for him, right? Uh, lots of long iron approaches, club head speed, distance mattering that's his game so i'm <laughs> i'm quite excited about jake knapp this week which means uh he'll certainly struggle and miss the cut but that's you know that's kind of the way the stats roll out with this size of field what total ownership should we be targeting for single entries i like that 80 percent um and again it kind of depends so some of the single entries so um like i know DraftKings does for the hundred dollar single entry, there might be one with a thousand people. There might be one with 500 people. There might be one with 200 people. There might be one with a hundred people or something like that. That also depends. But in general, I like to be in the 50 range pivots in each, uh, tier. Okay. So top of the board, the 10 K range, uh, Patrick Cantlay is going to get about a, uh, half the ownership of, of Roy McElroy and Scotty Scheffler, Xander Shoffley, Max Homa, Colin Morikawa, and even Justin Thomas to an extent are the low owned guys in the nine K range. It's not super uh, super big Homa is going to be about half the percentage. Th this is kind of crazy to me. So Max Homa, who looks to be plugging the gaps and the leaks in his game, who has never finished outside of 24th at this event is going to be half of the ownership of the three guys who are more expensive than him. I, I just think that's, they, they all might play better. These are all great guys in the nine K range, but that feels like why to me, um, Yes, I worry about his accuracy off the tee, but I mean, Sam Burns is just as inaccurate, right? I don't know. That's That just feels a little bit weird to me. The 8K range is getting dominated by Zalatoris and Cam Young. So the best pivot there is probably Tommy Fleetwood. Uh, half the ownership of, of Cam Young uh, has played well here in the past, continues to, to play great golf coming in. The 7K range, Chris Kirk 
7,800, or excuse me, uh, 16%. Jake Knapp, 14%. I think the best pivot here might just be Shane Lowry again. Lowry's playing good enough golf to, to be considered. Um, where is uh, Sahith? Have I, have I not gotten to Sahith yet? Can I not read names? Am I overlooking him somewhere? Oh, he was 8,100. Sorry. I thought I, I thought I saw his name, but I, I couldn't find him in the 7K range because he's not in the 7K range. I thought he was 7,900. He's 81, my bad. Um, the 6K range, we already talked about. That's you know EVR. It's Minwoo Lee. It is uh, basically those two. So anybody else, I like going back to Ekrot. I like Grillo. If you want to get really uh, down the board and start saving some money, mm, I wouldn't. Jake Knapp wouldn't be that bad. Looking forward to... Oh boy, Denver, Timmy. So um, we are. I'm not. I'm not ready to do U.S. Open questions. <laughs> Does the length of course and weather worry you for Morikawa? Slightly. Um, one of the things that I talked about on the Monday show was that Morikawa just has a very specific way in which he's going to have success this week, and if that way doesn't happen, uh, he's going to be in trouble, and it, and it has to be hit fairways. And look at his results, 64th, 9th, and miscut. Because if things go sideways off the tee, uh, which they did in 2018, he's going to miss the cut. If he gains four strokes off the tee, like he did in 2020, he's going to finish inside the top 10. So so he is. it is just all dictated by what he does off the tee. That's my opinion. There. So so yes, if, if, if that doesn't happen, he's in, he's in trouble. <laughs> uh, if Victor Hovland got married, would you be the best man in the wedding party in the wedding party or just invited? Probably not. I don't think he would have a, like a big party. If he got married, he seems like a, he seems like the type of guy who would just elope and then tell everybody about it six months later. Okay. Hope you are all well. Uh, we're looking for the producer's pick. Now, hold on. I did also see another comment about the producer who is my wife. Mina, and it was from TJ. I tailed the producer's pick last week, Sepp Straka, and it sucked. Zero out of 10, would not recommend. Agreed. Anyway, who she, who does she have this week? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. The audio <laughs> from a, from an undisclosed location, the audio <laughs> from producer Mina. Yes, we have you. I'll, I'll disclose it. It's from Boston. Hi, I'm coming from Boston. <laughs> Boston. Um, so my random dart that no one should be tailing because I don't know what I'm talking about is Keegan Bradley at 7,400. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. $7,400 Keegan Bradley. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. Do you think there's going to be a wave advantage? I do not. Can you rank in order of confidence uh, Cole, English, Keegan, Spieth, Day, Kirk for prize pool purposes? Okay. Uh, Spieth, Day, Keegan, English, Kirk, Cole. What was the number? Oh, at Yoka Dihi. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a golf course in Brooks, California, which is in the middle of nowhere. And I played uh, last week. Was that last week? 85. Um, we got all four seasons, holes three through eight. It poured. Then the sun came out. Then it got windy. Um, I made a lot of pars. And then I was in my pocket. I made like a triple on 17, a double on 18. Um it was hard. The rough was very thick. I was pretty happy with an 85, especially because I because I blew up at the end. I did make a lot of pars, though. All right. Uh, hey, Rick, I'd like to try getting into DK Showdown. How would you differently weigh attributes on a single round versus a whole tournament? Well, I would um, do a couple of things. I would look a lot at upside metrics. So things like how often are they gaining four or more strokes to the field? How often are they gaining five or more strokes to the field? When you look at golfers, and I'm going to put a smaller sample size in so that you can see this. And I think showdown, you should probably use a smaller sample size. Anyway, um, look at the different types of golfers we're going to uncover here. CT pan in the last 50 rounds has the same ceiling as 
Cam Davis, Denny McCarthy, Grayson Murray, Jason Day, Keegan Bradley, and Rory McIlroy. Same ceiling. Same ceiling. He has the floor of like Mackenzie Hughes and Emiliano Grillo, right? That that right there is like a decent showdown option. Even Mackenzie Hughes, right? These guys that are going to get smashed a handful, you know, frequently, but when they pop off, they're they can they can go nuts. I would look at that and then um, also, if you're using the custom model to generate lineups, I like to uh, go down here and just increase the randomness. So if you increase it, you know, from 10 to 25 or something like that, you're going to get some pretty wonky lineups and some pretty wonky results, which honestly, I think is, I think is a pretty good thing. Can you, can we use your tools uh, to identify the players in this field who haven't had success here, not horse courses, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, there's a couple ways to do this. So you could use the Holy grail or, or actually it's, they're both on the Holy grail. So go to the Holy grail, go to course horses, um, and then sort by the opposite. Right. So just, just click that button over there. So guys with at least 12 rounds, Shane Lowry minus 1.25, uh, strokes per route. See Woo Kim. Losing a stroke per round in 23 rounds. Brett and Ty losing two-thirds of a stroke in 22 rounds. So yeah, just just a reverse sort. Very, very simple. Yeah, let's go back to we it feels like it's time to do a Nick Dunlap update, right? Like what what in the world happened at the American Express and what is going on now? What he did at the American Express was phenomenal. Gained 15 strokes to the field and won as an amateur. Turns pro, finishes dead last at Pebble Beach, misses the cut at Riviera, and then finishes T53 at the Cognizant. Yes, it is difficult to play on the PGA Tour week in and week out. I suppose the good news is that um, his most recent start outside of the win is probably his best, right? So the American Express is weird. We only have two measured rounds. Um he lost strokes off the tee in his two measured rounds at the American Express and still found a way to win. Now, we're missing a lot of this because the way that that event works, but he's not a very accurate driver. Uh, if you look at his club head speed, very, very... So this is actually pretty interesting. So this is kind of like a lesson in smash factor, in my opinion. And remember that Nick Dunlap is a very small sample size. He is 16th in club head speed, but... 172nd in accuracy. That's not that's not that crazy. That happens a lot. He's also 159th in driving distance. So he has a very fast club that he sprays, but also doesn't hit it very far. He's not centering the he's not hitting it off the center of the club face, right? That's that's what that says. Because if you have 120 mile an hour club head speed and you can get close to a 1.5 smash factor, which is, I guess maybe I shouldn't give them, I'll give them 1.48. 1.5 is like what you're, what the max is supposed to be. I mean, you're talking about 179 miles an hour of, of ball speed. So you're talking about Rory McIlroy. That's what Rory McIlroy does. 179, 180, something like that. Um, so I think he's having trouble finding the center of the face. I also see a guy who struggles, um, from, from deeper proximities, I would, I, I do like the club head speed out of the rough this week. So, so I actually don't think because he's playing out of the rough anyway, he might as well have the club head speed, but, but there is water in play on a bunch of holes out here. I'm not sure the rest of his game really suits either, but I, I mean, some, something to keep an eye on because this is, this is really, you, you can't teach 121 miles an hour of club head speed that, that quickly, right. For a 20 year old. Um, there's a lot, I think that is projectable about Nick. Dun like if I was a, if I was the GM of LA golf club or whatever, right. And I was actually trying to scout golfers. Th this would be like it, raw intangibles is what, is what that would be. Sorry. I didn't mean to get that deep on that. Um, what's the most persuasive case you've heard or read for a golfer that you weren't high coming in on? That's tough. I don't consume really anything else um, from anybody else. Uh, it's just, I don't really have a reason to, or the time to, so I don't know if I can answer that. What I will say is, um, I, I, I think the max Homa at 8% and the form coming in the history here, I've warmed on him a lot. 
there was somebody else. I've warmed on Harris English. I will okay. So on Monday's show, um, Greg Dushan, the first on the first cut podcast for CBS Sports, Greg pointed out Harris English and kind of talked me into it. So that I will I will say that. So maybe that's helpful. Um, Brian Harmon at two hundred to one. No, I don't I don't think so. Uh, Thirty six rounds hasn't been good to me lately. Would you suggest more or less? Uh, in a field where the strength is better, I would go more. The The thought process being that when you have, let's say, top 10 players in the world or whatever, even those guys, when they're not playing well, can fix it and snap off and find a win quickly. So I tend to, I like to give the studs longer term form. Like, would anybody be surprised if Victor Hovland won this week? No. He's been, quote, struggling recently. Um, but you'd be 0% surprised. So if you did do that, so if you went and did, you know, strokes gain last 100 rounds, minimum 50, let's see what we would find here. Scheffler, Rory, Xander, Cantlay, Minwoo. Now that's some European tour stuff as well. Victor. Tommy Fleet with Jake Knapp, some Corn Ferry Tour stuff, a lot of Corn Ferry Tour stuff. Colin Morikawa, Matthew Pavone. Pavone has the, the DP World stuff uh, as well. So, um, yeah, I would I would say longer is probably better. One and done strategy. I've already used Scotty. Better play to use Rory this week or next week. Um, highly depends on your position, right? That's why I think that tool is so... Good, the pool genius ones, the links in the description. This is entirely dependent on your position here. I would think that any chance you get to, uh, if your only options are Rory this week or Rory next week, next week is, we, I don't know if we have the official number yet, but it's going to be a bigger first, first prize. It is also going to be a deeper field. But um, if you get an opportunity for like 15% of people to use Rory this week and nothing like Rory McIlroy's chances of winning this week and next week are going to be kind of similar. I know they're different fields and they're different golf courses, but it's not, it's not like we're talking six months from now where we're going to have no idea what, what is, what his form is like, then you should probably play him next week. Which two would you pick for one and done? Um, the options are Ludwig and Grillo, Fleetwood and Matt Fitzpatrick, Minwoo and Day. Probably Ludwig and Grillo, then Minwoo and Day, then Fleetwood and Fitz. Building a one-size-fits-all DK lineup using 6K players to be different. I like three 6K guys, but are too risky enough. Uh, this should be, in theory, the non-riskiest 6K field, right? Because these are guys that have played well enough to get into this. Not always, but you get my point. I saw Hideki was favoring his hip during practice today. Should I have any concerns about rostering him? I I don't know. I mean, there is... <laughs> whether he was favoring his hip or not, which I don't know if that's true. I'm, I, I believe you, but I always worry about Hideki. I always worry about Hideki. So I, I, don't, I don't think it changes my mind at all if you like him. You, you take on the risk, and if you don't, you don't. That's it's kind of a weekly statement. Patrick Rogers is a deep dive candidate from Landon. T6 in Mexico. Missed the cut at Riv, but had a T9 at Farmers. He's playing better golf. Drives it so well. Let me look at a couple other things real quick. Great club head speed and... Fairly accurate. Uh, let me take that back. Not big misses, right? So, so he he he's 137th in accuracy, but 41st in distance from edge of fairway. So when he misses the fairway, he doesn't miss it by much. Better from, or not bad from some of the longer proximities. <sighs> let me just check his bit. This is actually a pretty pretty interesting little profile here. Let me just check his Bay Hill stuff. Eh, it's fine. Okay. Seven out of 10, something like that. With Scheffler and Rory projecting as the highest owned golfers, what percentage 
of lineups, would you guess stack them both? Wow. I don't think many. So that would be, so then the, it says, and then, and then drop to EVR and Minwoo. So if you did that, you would immediately have 52 and 30, 82% projected ownership. You'd have basically the four most popular guys on the slate. And what would that leave you with? I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Stacking Scotty and, and Rory. I think people are taking a stand on, on one or the other. Other. What is wrong with Ricky Fowler? Um, I'll just go back and watch anything I've done for the last couple of months. It's it's I've been I've spent a lot of oxygen on it. He's just not putting as well. It's leaking into the rest of his game. I will say that I think um, I think he did put. I think he gained with the flat stick, not Peter Fowler. I think he did gain last week, and I just want to confirm that he gained the last two weeks which is a little, th this is the most hope that I've had in a while, but the v bar is very, very low, right? So if I was a two out of 10 for the last five months, I'm like a four out of 10. I'm still not over that average five yet, but, but I'm, eh, you know, we're, we're working our way there kind of. Hey Rick, I've been a member for a few years. Thank you. Wanted to thank you for all your hard work to make the site bulletproof. Cheers. How can I see after round one, the breakdown? Okay. So this has changed recently. So I got an email. I get some of the craziest emails. So this is, um, can I get the live leaderboard up here? So this should be last week's live leaderboard still. Okay. It is. So someone said, what happened to like, there's so much less data on the live leaderboard. I'm like, buddy, the live leaderboard is now a, a literal shot by shot tracker in real time where you can see everything that's coming in. You can see scorecards, you can see groups, you can see stats on the course, you can follow a lot. Like it is literally shot by shot now. It's, uh, it's like, it, it, I love it, right? Uh, so that was crazy to me. But uh, what I think he was getting at was that he wants to see that table view, which, is still right here on the showdown cheat sheet, which should still have last week's data on it. Let's see. It does, right? So, so the question was, you know, where would I go to see strokes gain T to green after round one? You'd go right here to the showdown cheat sheet. And every round, this is updated. You can choose which rounds you want. You can serve by totals, ranks versus expectation. You can see bounce back candidates. I mean, it's all it's all here. I didn't completely remove that. It's just in a just in a different spot. Willie Z or Victor for one and done. I have uh, each of them a little bit, but if you made me pick one, uh, I would take Willie Z who is uh, currently playing better than Victor. And I think there's going to be a lot of good spots for Victor later. Can you run a model for the Puerto Rico open? I thought, I thought you'd never ask. Of course. Right. So you can run models right now on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different slates. Um, here's Puerto Rico. Now we've got to be really careful here. This field is, uh, you're going to have a lot of guys who do not have all of the stats. So we're going to need to put in a baseline of, of strokes gain total, which is what everybody has. And we're probably going to have to use weighted strokes gain total. Okay. So let's do everybody's long-term kind of 50 round uh, weighted strokes gain total for half of our weights. Uh, then after that, what I would do is, you know, give me some of this, give me some of this birdie or better action, uh, 20 on birdie or better. You're going to, you're going to probably need to, to, to get after it. Uh, the other thing that I would do, if we have it, I would prefer for you to be a great approach player simply because it's, you know, always the most important, you know, kind of standalone stat. Um, but we have to be really careful about the number of stats that we use here. So that just right there, just a very quick look gives us Aaron Rye, number one, Rio, he number two, Daniel Berger, number three, Michael Kim for Kelly Kraft, who's $6,200. 
five, Streelman, Rasmus Hoygaard, Nate Lashley, Brandon Wu, and Chris Goddard are up as the top 10. I'd be very careful running a model on Puerto Rico and not using stats that like everybody has. Um, there was another model. There's a couple more model questions. Can you run a model focused on strokes gained on a, on long approach strokes gained off the tee and possibly some rough proximity? Uh, I don't know if I have rough proximity in here. Do I let's do, Long approaches uh, for – hold on a second. Let's do long approaches for 20, 20, put 40 there. What else do you have? Strokes gain off the tee. So strokes gain off the tee, let's call it last 36, last 100. What do you want? Let's do last 100, put 40 there, and we'll leave 20 on – uh, he says rough proximity. Let's just do, well, let's just do strokes gained approach, which would encompass all of that. Uh, Scotty, Victor, Ludwig, Cam Young, EVR, Zalatoris, Adam Scott, Corey Connors, Colin Morikawa, Lucas Glover are the top 10. Rick, trying a more is less theory. What are the top three stat categories for API? And then put 33% on each one of those. Okay. So here we go. Um, so it, it's going to be uh, strokes gained approach. It is going to be distance. And whoops. And it's going to be, I mean, I would, I would say course history because it's so dang sticky. Scotty Scheffler, Ludwig, Cam Young, Adam Scott, Xander Shoffley, Victor Hovland, Max Homa, Kurt Kitayama, Roy McIlroy, Nikolai Hoygaard. This is the unofficial fifth major. Uh, you pull some people, they pull the players, they might say that. Four-man scramble, live versus golf. Who would be the starting four for each? Off the top of my head. Scotty, Rory. Um, hmm. it actually, it's probably harder for the PGA Tour because you could just go Cantlay, Xander. You could go Victor and... God, who do you want? Like, uh, see, I should probably think about skill sets here. Let's do Scotty, Rory, uh, Victor, Cantlay. We're going to need a putter at some point. Cantlay will, if you give Cantlay the lie, the, the line, he'll bury everything. Rory and Scotty will give a, give those other guys a ton of looks. You might not even need Victor. Honestly, you might, you might want to go, you might want to go Xander Cantlay and get a well-rounded guy in Xander as well. Tough to say. Then it's definitely like Bryson, Brooks, Rom, DJ, Neiman, Bryson, Brooks, Rom. We need somebody with like a a putting situation. DJ might be okay. All right. Um, is there a cut? Yes. Top 50 and ties plus anybody within 10 shots. Who should crack the starting lineup this week against? Oh boy, James is here. James and I are going against each other on our season long fantasy. Come on. Is Fantrax down? I would not be surprised if Fantrax was down right now. I, I want to love Fantrax and it just never, ever works right. Hmm. This is so annoying. All right, James. Well, I'll try again later. I just want to love it, but I there's always something wrong with it. Okay, answered all of those, which is good. <clears throat> oh, fan tracks is up. All right, so I am going against him here. Uh, he is in first, I believe. He's six and two. I'm four and four. I'm running out. Tommy. Jake Knapp, Rory McIlroy, Will Zalatoris. I am benching Luke List, Brian Harmon, and Lucas Glover. So I didn't think that was much of a conversation. I thought that was pretty easy. He's going with Hadwin, Minwoo, Pavone, and Scotty. He has Bazade and Hode on the bench. He has Poston on the bench. He has Hoygaard on the bench. He has Seamus on the bench. He has Brendan Todd on the bench. I guess your only spot that you would consider is the Adam Hadwin spot. Um, so it's really like Adam Hadwin or Bezadenhout. I would probably play Bezadenhout, but I don't think it's that bad. 
am I the favorite to win this? Let me know in the chat. Am I the favorite to win this? Or is, I mean, James is the, he's, he's the leader. He's got the best lineup. Uh, my other lineup is pretty sick too. In the 500, I've got Ludwig, Sahith, Justin Thomas, Cam Young. Now I, I, I'm considering putting Austin Eckrode in over Sahit. That's the only decision that I have to make, but I don't know about that. Does it feel like chasing if I put Austin Eckrode in? That one's tough for me. I'll, I'll take that down to the wire. Let's do the Keegan. I think we kind of mentioned Keegan earlier, but I don't know if I did the full on. Has anybody seen the full swing yet? Full swing too? Has anybody started watching it? If you have, have you heard my voice yet? I believe I've, I, well, I definitely, I, <laughs> I definitely recorded voiceover stuff for it. I think it's in the last two episodes, the Ryder cup stuff. A lot of it was Ryder cup stuff. Missed the cut at Riv for Keegan lost three strokes putting that has become a little bit more unusual for him. This is a course that rewards the ball striking, the total driving. He's very good with his long irons, mid the long irons. Yeah, I, I mean, I think Mina's right. I think Keegan's a pretty solid play. Um, okay. A lot of these are like, hey, one and done ownership. Um, can you do a deep dive on somebody that we've already done? We have, we have not looked at Victor's uh, profile yet. So there was a question about, you know, was round four at Riv a sign of things to come. And and I thought really the first three out of the, every round, but, but Saturday was, was, was a good sign. And the fact that he broke this string of uh sour approach play, I think was important. I got the vibes from him when I spoke to him on the range that he was not maybe a hundred percent there, but like getting much closer. And, and he usually does not stay, uh, out of sync for long. So yeah, I, I think there's a lot of reason to be optimistic. Watch through your recent one and done video. I'm trying to apply it this week. I'm in 250 out of 4,500. Some of the bigger names I've used so far are JT Xander, Scotty, what makes sense for me? So you're in the top, what, 5%, um, uh, assuming you don't go to the tour championship, you could use Rory here. Uh, I would probably feel more comfortable using Cantlay here. Deep dive on Sam Burns. Somebody said, I thought you said Austin Eckler. Did I? I might have. Austin Eckler. Yeah, this is okay. So, um, Mina played Sam Burns in one of her one and dones, I think. And I was like, you played Sam Burns? Why? And I went and looked it up and I was, this is way better than I would have thought. T6, I mean, his 2024 has been great. All top tens in his last four. The putter's hot as, mo as molasses in January. I don't think that's the saying. Going to Bermuda. Ball striking's back. I could see Sam Burns winning this. That's a pretty, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> Pavone questions. Okay. Um, there were, I, I skipped over a couple of one and dog, one and dog underdog things. So underdog hat tip, right? When I partnered with underdog at the, at the beginning of the year, it was like, we, I, I, I only want to partner if we're going to get a commitment to the golf product. That means best ball drafts. It means props being ready earlier in the week. And it means a lot of options. And yes, Mina. Oh, she unmuted herself. I, thought she was I was just preparing. Oh, I don't, I don't know if we're ready for that yet. I guess we could be ready for that. Okay. I'll, I'll tee up. For this. And I was still muted. So don't worry. Okay. Sorry. So I wanted a commitment to the product and we are a hundred percent getting that. It used to be strokes, fairways, greens, whatever. Look at these options. Scotty Scheffler has like 14 different options from strokes to leaderboard positions, to bogeys, to fantasy points, to three hole stretches, to cumulative par four scoring, uh, just absolute hat tip. Okay. So with that, sorry, Mina, we will enter the one and dog, por one and underdog portion of the show. <laughs> woof, woof. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Um, 
So I thought that the strokes were a hair high because what you normally see, uh, and I think this is going to be pretty difficult. The rough is thick, but what you normally see is that uh, this week gets increasingly more difficult every day. That would be the ideal situation. Now, we'll see if the weather has anything to say about that. But they would love this to kind of ease into these guys and then just start shredding them the rest of the week. So I did already put in some props with Adam Scott. Now, this line has moved. So I'm, I, I'm not going to lie to you here. It was 71 and a half. I thought the lower was very easily the better side of that for round one. He had been gaining. Uh, he's, he's a very quick starter. So he gains in round one a ton, three or four, three or more strokes in like six of his last nine opening rounds, just something outrageous. It has moved to 71. I thought it was pretty bad. So I would still probably get in on 71, but I, I obviously wish I had the hook there. Um, you know, we talked about Keegan. Keegan is a notoriously fast starter who has the skill set to play around here. Um, there are these leaderboard position ones. So it's basically like, is he going to be inside the top 10 after round one? That's, that's basically what this prop says, right? So if you take better than 10.5 round one leaderboard position. So for that, you get a two, you get a, a, an extra multiplier on that. So you get the two X multiplier. So if you did that and Adam Scott's under lower than 71 strokes, that's a six X return on those two. So you got to be a little bit careful here because obviously you're getting the better return because of the odds of Keegan finishing inside the top 10 are, are not necessarily um, uh, a coin flip. But what I like about that is you're essentially getting round one top 10 props if you don't have access to a sports book, right? So I don't know how many states underdog is in now. It seems like a lot, but uh, it, it's not, it, it allows you to get access to that in, in a variety of ways. And also, some of you guys don't like the fact that they're coin flips, right? So, so you could take uh, Adam Scott worse than, you know, not finishing to not finish inside the top 10. Now that's a smaller multiple. And then you could take something like Scotty Scheffler is not going to finish inside the top five after round one. And that's a 1.17 X return, right? So there's just, this is just a completely different product and a completely different game than anything that has existed in the golf space before. Uh, and the bar has been very, very low for that, right? But but I, I'm really proud with what Underdog has been able to do. The other thing is, as if that wasn't enough, the, the best ball uh, season-long stuff and major championship is still running, right? So you can draft for major championships. You can use my ranks, rickrungood.com slash best ball. Just really happy with this. So anyway, I'll, I'll I'll spare you all the details. Use the code Rick. There's a link in the in the description to sign up. I think we should be supporting things of this nature, right? And it helps you. It helps me. It helps everybody. And if you're just here for the picks, um, here's what I would look at. So if you like, okay, Shane Lowry. Lower than 71.5 in round one. Um, that's on my radar. Sung JM higher than 71.5 in round one has just really, really struggled. I also did like, let's see if the Speeth line moved. Where's the Speeth bogey line? Okay. Jordan Speeth is capable of shooting a really good score despite making bogeys, right? That's kind of has been his, his nature. And there are some bogeys out here. And over 2.5, higher than 2.5, um, is a pretty good starting point. So, so these three would be a 6.31 X return, hundred to return. What is that? 631. I guess I could have done that. Could have done that math, but, um, those are good starting points. The Adam Scott strokes line, and then we'll see what we'll try to do here. Here's what we'll try to do is we'll see how, um, 16, 17 and 18 are playing early tomorrow. And I will try to get some of these guys that haven't gotten there yet, right? To see what time these things lock. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, all right, Mina, you can, you can take that down. Rick run good. Uh, excuse me. The code is Rick. 
Go sign up for Underdog. Get your deposit match. The link is in the description. Draft your teams. It's it's a very, very good, good product, good place. Okay. We're about to enter overtime, and I don't care. We're, we're going to keep rolling here. I do not believe, Larry, that there is a disadvantage for players who had to play into Monday. They what? They went from Palm Beach to Orlando, and they're professionals, and they played at most... I guess Lowry played. No, I guess at most they played like nine holes or 10 holes. I, I don't think it is a thing at all. Here's the big question. Eric Cole bounced back. Eric Cole, most popular golfer on the slate last week, uh, burned us all. Why? Why did that happen? Well, he lost six strokes on approach in round one and another two with the putter. Dare I say, <laughs> he gained strokes on Friday before he missed the cut. If you liked Eric Cole, please don't skewer, skewer me for this. You can spend your money however you want. But if you liked Eric Cole before last week, and 50% of the rounds, he gained strokes. And he had a blow up on a course that is known for blowups and that before the week started, we said there's going to be somebody who you wake up on Thursday morning and they're already out of it. We knew that was possible. We knew that like that situation was possible for someone. And if you liked Eric Cole before that, you're going to punish him for that one, that one round. Oh man. What's his, what's his ownership for this week? Cause everybody, everybody's just ready to, Punt him into the sun, right? Seven uh, percent. He was twenty three percent owned last week. Wow. Can you describe a player's typical approach leading up to a tournament? Uh, depends on the guy, but yeah, usually, I mean, you some guys are there Sunday night, so if if it depends on, obviously, depends, but like fly out Sunday. Get in late Sunday, kind of Mondays like rest. Maybe get to the get to the um, course in the afternoon. Maybe play nine holes. Tuesday you probably play the other nine that you that you didn't play the day before. Um, Wednesday you usually have a pro am, which is usually nine holes. You, you could play eighteen on Tuesday. I mean, you're you know you're, get your work in. Most guys play both nines, especially if it's something they're familiar with, and then uh, and then be ready to rock and roll. Okay. Oh yes, Scotty's using the mallet this week, or at least that was what was in his bag, the new spider. My Corey Connors thoughts. So there, I, I skipped a lot of like Corey Connors and Will Zalatoris questions. I'm so in on Will Zalatoris. I've said that frequently over the last couple of weeks. Just I'm in, and I'm pretty out on Corey Connors until something else changes. I mean, he is just. He is unable to out hit a horrendous putter. And that's that's really all it comes down to. Um, you know, the guy is gaining four, five, and six strokes ball striking, and he's not cracking the top 25 because he is giving it all away around and on the putting surfaces. Uh, he got a switch to Bermuda last week. It didn't help. Lost two and a half strokes putting. So I just am going to need to see something different than what I'm seeing right now. He's as of right now, because of Emiliano Grillo's resurgence, Corey Connors is uh, now the captain of Team Nopa. Hmm. Let's see what we have here. Uh, yeah, I don't think I got to this. I think I mentioned his name, but just to kind of show you the deep dive on Harris English here. So a healthy Harris is, is a good thing. 17th in Phoenix, 7th at Riviera. He had a 10th at, at uh, Sony. So he's having a good 2024. He had a decent end to 2023. And what you're seeing is, you know, gaining throughout the bag. That is Harris English's MO. I feel like I've said that a million times. That is Harris English's MO, is that he gains across the board. And when golf courses get difficult and when par is a good score, that is when Harris English shines. I don't know if he's going to win, but I like... His chances, I like that he is healthy, and I like the way that he's playing golf. 
Um, I have bet Adam Scott to win this week, and I will bet him to win next week, and I will probably bet him to win every event uh, through the Masters, and then I will reevaluate. Okay. I see a guy who is playing the best golf that he has in years. The finishing positions are following. I haven't said this yet. If you're not looking at a database that that ha- that doesn't have European tour data, like you're missing a lot of stuff in the world right now. So rickrungood.com, six different tours, live, DP World Tour, European Tour, PGA Tour, Corn Ferry Senior Tour, Asian Tour, all of those in here. So you get the full picture of every single golfer. And that's important for guys like Adam Scott, who had three straight top seven finishes um, at the end of 2023 and into 2024 on the DP World Tour. He's playing great golf. The next couple next couple of weeks are really good fits for him. You know, you look at the golfer power rankings last 36 rounds. Everybody in this field, I think Adam Scott's number two. He is. Min Woo Lee gaining two strokes per round. Adam Scott gaining 1.8. On episode three of Full Swing, still haven't heard you yet. <laughs> yeah, so just like a look behind the scenes. So I re- so last year, last year for for the first Full Swing, um, uh, it came down to the wire. But my I did some recording and and my stuff got in there for Matt Fitzpatrick's episode. This year we had a little bit more time, and I did I did record a lot more lines. I probably recorded five times as many lines. Now, I don't know if they will all get there or how many get cut, right? I mean, you got to remember, they take tens of thousands of hours and get it down to like eight hours or whatever. So I don't know what ended up making it in, but I know a lot of the lines that I recorded were Ryder Cup related. Keegan Bradley, it was a lot about, oh, difficult decisions for Zach Johnson and Luke Donald et cetera, et cetera. So I'm assuming if it's happening, it'll be those last two episodes. Um, so good luck finding it. <laughs> okay. Um, this just says Rory is not winning a green jacket this year. I mean, yeah, I'll say that about like any single golfer in the field. Thoughts on JT. Yeah, I gave JT a pass. Right. So, uh, the, the miscut at Riv, I, I kind of just gave him a pass on. It was an outlier from results. He had played so well since the Wyndham. And I don't know what happened at Riviera, but it was very uncharacteristic. Call it the Tiger effect. I don't care what you call it. I just call it an outlier. So, yeah, in, in on JT again, guy, a guy's stock I've been buying for five months. I'm going to continue to buy. Things to check out as a spectator at Bay Hill. I've actually never been to Bay Hill, but I will tell you, um, walk the course backwards. If you are walking in the same direction as everybody else, you are doing it wrong. Just go start with there. Hey, Rick, what irons do you play? Looking for advice. Um, It might stink and it might be more expensive, but you should consider at least going to get fit. Even if you just pay the hundred bucks or whatever for the fitting and don't buy the clubs through them and just get an idea of what is good for you and what's not good for you. That would be pretty valuable. Um, I play the Mizuno, the 223 pros. I love them. And they were, I used to play, I'll tell you this. Here's a fun story. I used to play, um, Callaway. Uh, I think they're the XR hots with graphite shafts and they were very hot these things so when we tested these irons we we could not i mean they were five or six years old at the time i'd been playing them for five or six years we had trouble finding anything that was better okay five or six old iron five or six year old irons even the even the newer models it was just equivalent Right. It was like, okay, well, yeah, you just hit that the same. It's just all the only ones that were hotter and the only ones that were more forgiving were those Mizuno 223s. But that is rare. Um, so maybe you might want to go look at like, hey, uh, can I buy a used set of Callaway XR hot? Like, I've got nothing but great things to say about those clubs. And they tested so well the last time I got fit.
Hey, Rick, if you had the number one pick in a fantasy draft where you get that player for the rest of their career, oh. Ludwig? I mean, the answer is probably some like six year old who we don't know exists yet, right? But, um, God, Ludwig's what, 20? No, I guess he might be 22. Um, already a proven winner, elite skill set. Very good demeanor, projectable body, whatever that means. Just like fit and off the top of my head, it's probably Ludwig. I just don't know how you'd avoid that. I'm happy that I've answered a lot of these. Harris English. Um <laughs> Any chance we could have Oliver make a pick? Yeah, that might be a good idea. Um, yeah, well, okay. So this is this is a valid point. So it says the problem with underdog is they shift the payouts on golf huge if you pick two guys to go over on or under on strokes. Leaves pretty little value. Prize picks doesn't shift them nearly as much. Uh <sighs> There's a lot there. So from my experience with prize picks, they do shift them just as much as everybody else does. And, and in some situations would not even let you do that. That is not really a prize picks or an underdog situation. The entire industry doesn't let you correlate golf um, because they've all been burned by a windy day where everybody takes the overs. Okay. So that is not, I don't think it's operator specific. I would rather it be adjusted and be told that it's being adjusted before you enter it. So that was always the problem that I encountered where you put your entry in, you, you, you submit it, and then it tells you you've been adjusted, which is like, you knew, you knew as I was putting this in, I was being adjusted. So I think the fact that underdog tells you up front, the fact that it's kind of an industry wide thing. It listen, I wish they didn't, right? I wish they let you cor correlate till your heart's content, but that seems to be the way the industry is going. Um, okay. Lots of Harris English, lots of one and done. We did that, we did that, we did that. Pick to win, Victor Hovland, probably. Um, let's do Justin Rose real quick. Oh, you know what I want to do? I also want to do a couple other things. I'm 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 still ready to rock and roll. Oh, Justin Rose is not good. Not good. This is not the Rosie that we saw make tangible ball striking gains. He's lost multiple strokes on approach in four out of five. Yikes, yikes, yikes. I hate that profile. Um I want to point out, uh, if you've stayed this long, you're a sicko just like me. I want to go over here real quick. So I mentioned it earlier. I've got the cheat sheets loaded in for PGA, Port, you know, Puerto Rico, Europe, uh, Corn Ferry, Live. The Live stuff has been like the most profitable stuff I've done. <laughs> I don't know if it's because there's less competition of people playing or at the top, but like, Smashing Neiman last week was awesome. Uh, I have uh, had a lot of success in the DFS streets with, with the live stuff as well. What I did not realize is how good Louis Ustazen has been. So Louis went, again, you have to have the worldwide stuff here. Louis went back to back with wins at the end of the year on the DP world tour finished eighth in Mayakoba finished runner up to Carlos Ortiz in Oman finished runner up to Joaquin Neiman in Jeddah. He is this week. How much is he this week? $9,100. Uh, I also bet him to win this week. He's the only live bet I made this week. This is a golf course. So they're playing in Hong Kong. This is the first time they've played in Hong Kong. So there's not course history stuff. So everybody's kind of, I don't want to say on an equal playing field, but there's not that, you know, last week there was great course history for Neiman, for Brooks, um, 
I think Carlos Ortiz had played well enough there that people were excited about Ortiz. But what Louis doing is really, really good. I, I'm still a believer that, um, you know, since the start of 2024, Joaquin Neiman is like by far the best player on Liv. Uh, I I think that's pretty pretty clear. Um, I want to do also a little bit of a deep dive on David Puig here because he's playing, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, he's going to be in the open, or at least is trending to be in the open. So so there's going to be a lot of stuff that happens in the next couple of weeks where we have to keep an eye on qualification criteria for guys that are going to get into major championships. There is a uh, again, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I just saw before I went hot here that the RNA is going to open up uh, not to official world golf rankings, but to this international federation list that if you play on the Asian tour, or the Japanese tour, you can get into the major that way. Well, David Puig is like second on that list right now. He won in Malaysia. He finished 10th in Oman. He plays some of the other Asian tour events outside of live. Finished 39th at the U.S. Open last year. I'm, I'm all. I know we are months away, and he might not even be in this event. But I'm already preparing myself for like a $6,200 David Puig. I'm also looking at him for this week. Played well in Jeddah. Played well in Vegas. Uh, top 15s in in both of those. T15 to be specific in in both of those. And he is in way too cheap. Just just way too cheap for this week at at uh, $7,600. Um, going back to that, Moronk's been playing a little bit better. He got off to a slow start and live. He's been playing a little bit better. Burmeester, we've talked about him in the past. Um, I did load this into the power or into the custom model as well. So if you did want to build live Hong Kong models, you got to be a little bit careful. Cause again, you know, not, a, they don't have all the same stats, but you could, you could go out here and build yourself a a live Hong Kong model. Yeah. Look, look at David Puig. This is just a hundred percent, you know, strokes gain total Puig third. Wow. Mm, okay. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, the other thing, don't forget there are two contests open on splash right now. One is a guaranteed purse for tiers for this week. So you pick one golfer from each of six tiers. It's $20. It's a guaranteed prize purse. These guys have been guaranteeing the purses for us the last couple of weeks. Somebody is going to win $864 and the top 25 are going to be paid no matter whether this fills or not, which uh, we're about halfway there. There's always a rush at the end, but get involved in that. And then here we go. This It's not the final call yet, but it is very, very close to, I mean, we're a week away from players championship. It's going to start in eight days. So the three and done, pick three golfers for the players, for the Masters, for the U.S. Open, for the PGA, for the Open Championship, 15 golfers in all, can only use them once. Uh, that contest is, is, is available and will close in eight days. 500 bucks. I don't think we're going to fill it, but we are, uh, I mean, it always gets a rush at the end, right? So we might get 100, 200 people. I don't know. It'll be a decent purse. It's got segment payouts. It's it's a flat payout structure. So if you haven't gotten in this yet, uh, make make sure that you do. Links for all of that. Links for underdog. Links for pool genius. Everything is in the description. Are you a Bitcoiner? Uh, I did very well on Bitcoin. Not like obviously didn't make like hundreds of thousands of dollars, but like I did okay on Bitcoin. Um, in like 20, what was that? When it got, when it like topped at 30,000 or whatever for the first time, what was that? 2019. I was like, I'm just going to take my money and run. And I did very well there. Uh, I have very, very little Bitcoin. I don't know if Bitcoin is the answer, but I do like the idea of like, like a, a global digital currency that you don't need banks and all that stuff. Like, yeah, I get it. I completely get it. I, I I don't know if Bitcoin, I think too much Bitcoin people are using it as like a hold of value as opposed to just like using it for transactions. That's what we, that's what needs to happen. Um, Topped at 20 and 27. Yeah, maybe it was that. I think it was maybe later than that. I thought it was at 30. 
I don't remember. Um, okay. Okay, so let me just do a couple quick updates here. So there is a lot happening at rickrungood.com right now, as there always is. So I, when we switched over to the new golfer profile, um, whoops, I removed like those putting splits because I didn't really think anybody used them. And boy, was the feedback uh, strong on that. So the next update, which I'm hoping is very soon, will have the uh, strokes gain putting stuff on the left-hand side here. That'll be back. The other thing that will also be back is the um, strokes gain by course. It's going to be down here at the bottom. Okay. So I've, I've heard you. That stuff's coming back. Also, I don't want to uh, announce it yet, but I guess I will. So, so I've been testing, and hopefully this will go live soon, uh, the new cheat sheet. Okay. So if you realize what's happening here is that there are a couple of tools that are on basically a different system. Custom model is on a different system. It talks to the golfer profiles, which is on the same system, but like things like the cheat sheet and the course key stats are not there yet. Well, they will be. And cheat sheet is next and almost done. So that'll be very, very cool so that everything continues to talk together. It's a very cohesive experience. The fact that now the, you know, the live leaderboard is freaking shot by shot. I mean, I'm just so happy with the state of rickrungood.com. And at the same time, I've got a million things I want to do. So it's all coming. Um, I've got, there's a lot of data stuff happening that I think you guys are going to be excited about. Um, I cannot talk about that, but yeah. I think that's it. Nobody asked me what my betting card was, which I feel like is progress because, because you shouldn't care who I bet and I don't want you to care, but I had it pulled up and nobody asked me about it. Louie, 16 to one. Uh, Adam Scott at 60. Harris English at 60. Zal Torres at 35. Hovland at 18. Shouldn't care. But here I am giving it out like any, like anybody gives a crap. Okay. I don't know what to do. I think, I think we're done here. So go check out all the links in the description. Um, tomorrow will be fun. I'm going to go do some data stuff right now. And I appreciate you. See ya.